Alright guys, how's it going back again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and in a shocking turn of events, many parts of the community are actually agreeing with Draza here on his thoughts on the format changes he would like to see going forward in the CDL. After winning a best of 7 to take down the championship at Major 4, he wants to return to best of 9 at Grand Finals format. That will still be the case for the World Championship, but what format is preferable? A best of 9 with a 1-0 advantage? Do you like the best of 7? Or should we even go back to a double best of 5? Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed Enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Some weird crossovers here with Octet, of course, getting, uh, well, engaged last night. So congratulations to both Sam LaRue and Kelsey, of course, for a tweet that actually blew up on Twitter last night because uh, Albert decided to quote tweet it, as you will see from time to time. He's been catching a fair few Ws lately. These were his overall numbers for the stage. 8-1 overall records, just beating out Optic Texas, who were 8-2 overall record, right? So these are 4-1 online. Optic were 5-0, but then these went undefeated at the major itself. These hill time stats, okay, control is outrageous as well. A 1.41 he has. Incredible kills and deaths per 10 minutes. Obviously, low deaths, high kills is good. Search and destroy, not so good, but didn't matter because the rest of the guys picked up the sack. But look at the respawn numbers, right? This is back to the Octane of old, where a few years ago we talked about, I think it was maybe last year or a time where Octane was not doing so well in the respawns, but for some reason he was turning up in the surge. Octane has never really been known as a phenomenal surge player. He's maybe going to drop a 1.0, but it's the respawns where Octane always thrived in years past. And look at this hill time, 107 seconds in hill per 10 minutes. Like, those are by far the best numbers in the league. Even Selium has been trying to step up his hill time lately. He's about 89, 90 seconds, something like that. And um, that's what Selium's capable of when he's trying to sit in the hill. And obviously, FaZe have tried to make that happen now with the AR sitting in the hard points. And we'll even see later today some stats from Boston, where none of their ARs are really sitting in the hill. And Octane is just getting way more hill time than anyone else. Obviously, it's, you know, more beneficial when you've got a great team around you and you actually can get the hill time because your guys are getting the kills and you're winning the maps. But, um, you know, still, those numbers are pretty outrageous. So, congrats to Octane. One team not doing so well, Ellie. I thought this is a remarkable stat, actually. Seattle Surge. We'll talk about Rostermania briefly here in a second because we saw what Boston decided to do yesterday, getting rid of Nero and bringing Vivid back into the team. But Surge are yet to win a round 11 this year. They've currently got into five round 11s only. It feels weird they're only into five round 11s but uh, whatever, and they're 0-5 in those round 11 situations, so some of it is probably lack of ice, some of it is other factors, I guess, because probably they should have won that round 11 against FaZe on Embassy Search, but then Preds got destroyed by the simp hipfire cheese when he was probably dead silence back at Major 3, and um, yeah, the next worst though is Optic Texas 2-8, and eight. and I've been seeing this a little bit lately, okay, 2-8 and eight is kind of on the bounds where if you just tossed a coin 50-50 a number of times, 2-8 and eight is like, um, you know, it would happen from time to time, but I'm sure Optic will have to think, okay, why exactly are we keep losing these round 11s? Because it's quite an important deal, right? If you're 2-8 and eight in round 11s, that's going to, well, have a significant effect on your season standings. If that was 5-5 five in five for Optic, a couple of those could have given a game 5. They might be top of the season standings right now, but it's good for Optic to know there's things they can still improve on. Quick note on RCTs as well, because we're wondering about, okay, Los Angeles, Grillers, some of the teams at the bottom. We said yesterday, at least from my perspective, the bottom four teams, there isn't really much reason to change because you're either just chalked any way, or if you're Vegas, you're pretty much as good as you possibly can be with the resources that Legion have. So it's the next up teams that are going to, I think, potentially look to make changes. We talked about Surge yesterday. We talked about the possibility of, well, Boston making their move. Will it be good or will it be bad? We'll see. But RC also has put back into his bio Los Angeles Grillers. It was confirmed the other day. A couple of guys pointed out, and it's very clear on Spoonbill. I checked this myself today as well, that he removed LA Grillers from his bio on April the 22nd. But as of today, it's back in his bio. Two-time world champ, Call of Duty player for the Los Angeles Grillers. So, I don't know why he removed it, right? They got knocked out of the tourney and then he removed it from his bio. Kind of made it feel like he was either going to be just, you know, I've had enough of these guys, I'm out of here type thing or whether he was actually going to be benched or whatever, we don't know. But um, now it's back in there. So, I guess we'll just have to see because there have been some discussions that given that this is the final chance for teams to really try and make moves if they want to before the World Championship. And in fairness, in the case of LA Grillers, they're not making the World 
World Championship anyway, right? So it's just really for Major 5 to try and do a bit better. Then, you know, maybe they would consider it, but unlikely to happen based on this evidence. Let's talk about Draza, though, and his thoughts going forward on the state of the format in the scene, because lots of talk about the LAN at League as well, just because this venue at Blong Arenas in Columbus is one of those venues where the online League matches that are currently done could be held at a venue like that on LAN, right? That's the type of venue where the LAN League would be good to be hosted, right? I mean, even back in the day, to be fair, in the Infinite Warfare World War II days, pretty sure the venue they were putting on the MLG Studios or whatever, I think it was also in Columbus, were, it looked better than that, to be honest, but still, it is what it is, and that would be a cool venue to have all of the regular online qualify games played from, just no longer online, just on LAN. Now, yeah, that's complicated for many reasons. The teams will have to move there. Probably online is here to stay for the qualifiers. It's understandable, but many are saying, look, we want to have either more majors or just more fans in general, right? Because having that major without the fans was definitely a bit of a letdown, and I think it did harm the even online viewership as well in terms of, um, you know, how enjoyable the event is to watch from home. Still a good major, though, at the end of the day. But LA Thieves, after winning, if they're going to give thoughts on potential changes they would like to see, they're going to be taken with more credence, right? It's been the case before with, for example, Slasher. When he says things just after a loss, it's like, oh, excuses, excuses. But when he says things after a win, then it's like, okay, fair enough, maybe we have to listen, right? Because he won the series, and he's still complaining about XYZ, ping, or whatever the case might be, online Call of Duty in general. So Droza gives his thoughts on the best of nine grand finals format potentially returning. We saw this weekend it was a best of seven in the finals, and I generally believe it's somewhat underwhelming the best of seven. Now, I must admit, as a European Call of Duty fan that's staying up quite late on these days to watch these games, I'm kind of down for the best of seven because it does mean the series is a bit shorter, there's less breaks in the series, and it's more likely to end at a reasonable hour. There is the argument, though, is the best of nine more, um, you know, is it more entertaining in general? Do you get better series with the best of nine? We saw, of course, the incredible 4-0 to 5-4 Toronto versus Minnesota at stage five back in the Cold War season. That was absolutely outrageous, and you don't really get that to the same extent in a best of seven. Okay, you can have a 3-0 to 4-3 comeback, and I don't really mind a best of seven. I just think the way the maps are structured within the seven maps is not optimal. The double control is a frustrating point to me, especially because control is the final map before the search and destroy. And often so far this season, we have seen 4-2 grand finals, right? I think the last couple have been 4-2 victories, which ends on usually an LSC low control, which is just a kind of underwhelming map to finish out the tournament on, you know what I mean? So you will LSC low control, are you really super hyped about it? It doesn't really paint the game in the best light when you're playing the worst mode of what's arguably going to be the final map of the tournament. So I think that's a debate to be had. But Draza definitely got a lot of interaction on this. 2,000 likes on the tweet. Envoy agreed. Solid shower thoughts. Obviously, Octane says it as well. Straight up Vouch. And even we get Ghosty saying Vouch as well. Now, um, you know, even Ghosty says Vouch for the two best of fives. And we'll discuss that here in a second. So Ghosty and Draza, we know they had a bit of beef, right? Because Ghosty online, when they played the bounty game, came in the game chat and said, hey, Draza, that's free cash and all this. I don't think he was talking to Draza specifically. But Draza obviously remembered, wrote down the receipts. And then when he beat them in the grand finals of the major, said what he said after that success. So what do you guys think about this? This was the map mode combination that we had this past weekend. The best of seven in the finals. Hardpoint search, control, hardpoint search, control, search and destroy. Now, um, as I say, I think that just doing this, get rid of the second control and put in another hardpoint is a significant step up. As I say, I don't think best of sevens are exactly terrible, but best of nines can be more entertaining, more down to the wire. Having to get to five maps is a pretty big deal as well. And also, I'm generally in favor of map pools in the grand finals that really test a team's map pool, right? So um, if it's a double best of five, and we'll see that in a second, but I think one of the issues with that can be that it doesn't really stretch the map pool of the team. I want the team that wins to be the one that's not just the best at two or three maps, but they're the best over the entire set of competitive maps that we have. And a best of nine means there's barely any maps that get bans, and you have to be good at everything, right? And we saw this with FaZe back in Cold War. They used their regular qualifier matches just to expand their map pool, then they would turn up to the major, whether it was on LAN or online, and they would be super good at Apocalypse and, you know, Checkmate and all the map mode combinations FaZe were great at, and they just win all the finals. They were so difficult to beat in finals because their map pool was the deepest, and um, I think that deserves credit in the format. Now, best of seven, that's slightly less big of a deal, and having the same amount of controls as hard points is, to me, far from optimal, so I would like to see that get changed around going forward. The other option, of course, is a best of nine. Now, this was the best of nine format we had back in Modern Warfare. This was the World Championship Empire versus FaZe Modern Warfare 2020, this World Championship was, but 
calls the Modern Warfare 2019 title. This, to me, is the best format the CDL has had so far. Because a best of nine that we had last year and in Cold War, there was no winner's bracket advantage, which meant there was four search and destroys in a nine map series. And I think four searches in a nine map series is pretty outrageous. I think it would go three hard points, two controls, and four search and destroys, which is like, um, I don't think that's great. To me, this is the best format we've had, with a 1 0 advantage for the winner's bracket team. Now, I know that the CDL thinks that a 1 0 advantage for winner's brackets is somehow confusing for the fans, and we've discussed that in the past. I don't really understand how it is. Look at this, right? It's very clear what's happened here. Dallas have not lost a series so far in the brackets. They made the grand finals from winners. They beat FaZe in the winner's finals, right, to drop them down to losers. So they deserve some degree of advantage. Now, technically, the winner's bracket team has the V2 advantage, but I mean, okay, they get to choose what controls they're going to play and they get to choose side on stuff, but it's not a massive deal compared to an actual map advantage. And back in the day, the double best of five used to give a mega advantage to the winner's bracket team. We'll see in a second. So, um, I mean, yeah, this to me is the best one we've had because we've got three hard points in here, two controls as it would be, domination back in the day. Thankfully, that's gone. And then three search and destroys. So that to me is a better split and there's only eight maps here. So, I don't know. This is what I would personally propose. The double best of five is another interesting perspective. Back in the day, like pre-CDL, the grand finals generally used to be two best of fives. So the winner's bracket team that came from the winner's finals, they would just have to win one of the two best of fives. And it's a very, you know, traditional format in that the team from winner's bracket has to lose twice as every other team does. And therefore, you know, that's the format that is fairest in a sense. I did generally find though the double best of fives. Sometimes the winner's finals winning team was just the best team that had already won at the winner's finals. And often it was quite clear that they were going to win the finals and they would just smoke the, the loser's bracket team 3-0 in the finals and the finals would be super underwhelming because it would last like 30 minutes. So I'm kind of in favour of longer finals in general and it was very rare in a double best of five for the loser's bracket team to win. It did happen but you can pretty much count the amount of times that happened on one hand and often winning the winner's finals was as good as winning the grand finals in a way. So I'm actually not a massive fan of that format. I did quite like it but my preference would be the best of nine with the one map advantage but there's a different perspective on this but I do think the best of seven is kind of underwhelming and the double hard point double control just isn't particularly going to cut it for me. Now for the grand finals of this tournament's world championship or this season's world championship it has been confirmed here by Daniel Sai that major finals are best of seven but champs finals are best of nine. And I think the reason why they made it best of seven this year was I think viewership numbers in a way they probably felt like the best of nine was kind of too long for a normal finals. It was going on for like you know two hours and people weren't really staying around the whole time. They'd tune out, tune back in. They weren't super engaged. And I can understand that, right? And as I say, I don't necessarily mind the best of seven. It's more the map mode combinations within it that are kind of frustrating to me. But Champs Finals is indeed going to remain a best of nine. The other thing that I would really like to see, and Pred probably agrees with this as well, is just something else for the rest of the season, right? Champs is going to be in mid-June, which is very early, and it's expected, right? The season is the same length as before. It just started much earlier, which is a good thing that it started way earlier, and we need to continue that going forwards. But just one additional major cycle would be fantastic. No, as Pred says, two more months and the season is done. Feels like it's been so quick. It doesn't feel long ago since Major One was happening back in December. And here we are with one more major cycle and champs to go. Like, you know, we're just around the corner really from the end of the season, to be honest. So I think one more cycle in future, Major Six in London, I don't know, would be fantastic. But, you know, obviously not going to happen this year. And next year, there's a big question as to exactly what that looks like. So very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Um, it was like we had a team dinner and we were walking back from a restaurant. And uh, I think me, Austin, and uh, me, Austin, and Crowder were walking like ahead of everyone. And then like uh, me, Austin, and Crowder were like walking ahead of everyone. And like MC, RJ, or not RJ, MC, Nikki D, and like someone else was like farther back. And like we were like walking down the sidewalk, and like we get we're actually pretty close to the hotel. It was like right next to the hotel almost, and like these guys like pulled up in a car and they like screamed like "Hey!" like out the window, and I was like, "What the?" F so I like turned around. And when I turned around, like they it looked like they had like a gun pointing out the window, but it was like an airsoft gun or like a Nerf gun or something, and they God. all sh and they all shot us. Like, thankfully we all had our hoodies up and everything, so like it only hit like our hoodies and shit. But like it didn't really, it didn't, it didn't even hurt. It just like felt like something like hit, like tapped like the back of your like sweatshirt. But.